My name is Brian, this is the Vapor Chronicles, and today we're going to take a look at a little something from a lost vape. <coughs> we're going to take a look at a little something from a lost vape. This is called the Paranormal DNA 75C. I've had it for a few weeks, I put it through all of its paces, I vaped on it, different builds, different tanks, and I got a whole lot to say, so let's take a closer look. Let's dive in and break it down. So in your kit, mod, user manual, warranty registration card, micro USB charging and upgrade cable, two extra panels, and this mystery suction cup that actually is for pulling off the panels. Pretty nifty, right? They're magnetic, and you can see there's a little thing to grab onto, and this allows you to grab a hold of these panels and remove them without damaging them by sticking sharp objects into them. Speaking of those panels, the outside of the mod that I have came with the carbon fiber and also the wood. Um, it's the little details, man. These wood panels just look so well done. I mean, they're beautiful, beautiful panels. Little screen, little touches. You can see this beautifully stitched leather right in the comfort part of the pocket of your hand, right in the palm, obviously, depending on how you fire. Um, I do find that finger firing is the most comfortable method of firing this device, but you can also thumb fire and it's really comfortable with your little notch right here. Stainless steel threaded 510 with the spring loaded center pin. You have these really nice screws here holding everything down. Nice and quiet. Nothing is loose. Nothing rattles. The screen is nice and bright, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you have all of your operational buttons. You also have your micro, micro USB upgrade and power port. And then you have this different slider. And now a lot of people are gonna say, well, what differentiates this from the Therion? And that's a great question. There's a few tiny little details and one of them is pretty large and it matters to some people and not to others. Physically, they're very similar. I think they're similar size-wise. They both use dual 18650 batteries. They both have a DNA 75. So I think from that standpoint, there's really not much of a difference. And if you own this, I think upgrading to this, eh, it's gonna be a stretch. Okay, I personally like the aesthetics of this. I think it's more classy looking. I think the quality feels better. Um, but physically looking, they're very similar. I mean, the button positions are identical because they use the same board and they're on the button. The screens are identical. Firing button, circular, square. But positionally, this has a little more of a contour on the front. This is more smooth. And same goes for the bottom. But I mean, as, as far as pure size goes, they're very, very similar, okay? Even the 510 connections look the same. I would say 27 will fit perfectly. 28, tiny, tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit on the end there, but it still does fit on there, all right? Now, when I take this off, not that I would use the Sherman on something like this. So your 24, 25, 26, 27 millimeters are gonna fit on here. 28 has a little bit of an overhang. Um, I find 24 sits perfectly because of this beveled edge right here, but the Reload RTA, it's so pretty, it's made for it, it's perfect, and I really dig it. Uh, as far as the panel removal goes, you know, as long as you have your little suction cup, you just pop it on, squeeze, and then you pull, and then the magnets come off, and both sides, you can remove the panels to change the look of the device. The panels are really strong, really well built. And you can actually see that this is made out of real wood. You can see the wood all the way through and it has a nice finish on both sides. And if you wanted to change it to carbon fiber, you would just pop it in like so and then it just locks in. No rattles, no shakes, no rolls. The battery compartment is different. So this slides nice and smooth and it has a nice little spring to it, see that? But really smooth. Slides in perfectly and then it slides up. 
there's your two negative contacts and the two positive contacts are marked at the top there and the battery slide in just like so. So you would have battery one, battery two, and then you would close your door, push down and then close and it locks into place. No problem. And I'm not going to do a tutorial on how to use the DNA 75 C because we've seen it a thousand times. There's entire videos dedicated to the DNA 75 C, but it is firmware upgradable at 75 Watts. It has a lot of settings built into it. You have this really neat menu system with this middle button here. For battery information, you can see that I have 4.2 volts right now, the board temperature and the room temperature. So it's pretty freaking hot in here, as you can see, 87 degrees, which is cool. And you also have your coil material. And that's where you can switch it from nichrome, stainless steel 430, stainless steel 316L, nickel, stainless steel 316, titanium one, and then back to wattage mode, okay? Real easy to go through all the different settings. You can adjust your wattage in one watt increments. You can also read your resistance and you can also adjust your resistance if you need to. So you can measure again and then you can go back. You can do your resistance lock from this screen also, which is really nice. And there's also an info screen, so you can have your system diagnostics, USB diagnostics, and your puff records. But say you want to go to about, you can see that DJLSB Vapes uh, did all the firmware on this, so it was really cool. You can also see your serial number. You also have your preheat settings, so you can enable or disable. You can also set the power and the temperature and the punch. So when you go to preheat punch, you can adjust that like that, depending on how much you want, or you can disable it by just clicking it off or on. You also have your settings. So you have your screen brightness, and you can adjust that. You also have your temperature in units, you have your lock settings, and you can go back. You can also adjust stealth mode here, your time and date. You can also select different profiles, so watts only, profiles, and you can customize those in your eScribe settings. I do recommend watching a full tutorial on the DNA75C if you're not familiar with it. You can also check out many, many, many reviews on the DNA75C. Uh, really awesome board as long as you're okay with having 75 watts and that meets your needs. So let's take the Lost Vape Paranormal DNA 75C for a vape. Let's do it. There you go, the up close. So much to love about this beautiful Paranormal from Lost Vape. So much to love, but I got some things that I'm, I'm a little confused about, some things that it's not really Lost Vape's fault, but I think some people out there, especially those that have the original theory on DNA 75C, is it worth the upgrade? Well, I think that that question really de depends on if you have issues with the battery placement in this. It also depends on your budget, obviously, and it also depends on if you like the aesthetics of this. They're so close to one another. I mean, when you hold these side by side, tank position's the same, fire button's the same, board's the same, dual 18650s, same power. The difference really comes down to a couple differences with the panels, the leather, which I actually think is a wonderful upgrade. Um, this is more comfortable, I think it feels more premium, and I think it feels more customizable. One of the issues that I always had was I felt like getting the internal battery on the one side, on the furthest side in, was always tough. It could tear your battery wraps if you weren't careful. Once you sort of nailed it, it wasn't that big of an issue, but for some people it was. If you didn't like this sort of clamshell design of this, then this is something that I think would be great. But is it worth the money? Well, that's really up to you and your budget and what you like to spend on vaping products. The other thing is, is that having the same 75 watts really limits the, the, the capability of this mod. Now, 75 watts for me, for a lot of setups that I use, is satisfactory. It's enough power. It has all the temperature control suite that you'd expect from the DNA 75 from Evolve. But every once in a while, I like to throw an RDA at 120 watts, and this just doesn't have the gusto to get you there. All right? For the right person, the right vapor, the right vaping range, this is a classy device. Great battery life. You put something on here at 60 for 60 watts, and you're going to vape this thing all day. Dual 18 650s, uh, smooth as glass, bottom entry. I love the hinge. I love the slider. Uh, everything works really, really well. The panels, 
love them, sexy. Just don't lose the little suction cup because if you do, you're gonna have to find suction cups at Harbor Freight or a supply store or something like that uh, because you don't wanna scratch the panel sticking things in there to sort of get them to pop out. If I had to pick between the two, I'm picking this all day, every day, but they're very close, similar devices. This should have been called the Therion 1.5 because that's what it feels like. It's a new name, a new, new look, but it's really the same device. It just has a couple upgrades. The firmware on here I like better. Uh, DJLSB went back to the lab, started messing with it, and added some really nice features. Uh, the DNA75, for those that have never had one, uh, nowadays everything's in there. So like you want to you want to change how quick it ramps up. You want to change your wire settings. You want to make adjustments. There's so much adjustability already there, built in from the start that you don't even have to worry about going into eScribe. But if you do, you can upgrade. You can adjust your settings. You can uh, upload and save files, you can share files, there's just a lot of flexibility there, but you don't have to, and that's a really good pro for this device. So let's talk about some pros and some cons. The pros, build quality, definitely. This thing is built well, the paint's good, no rattles, no nothing loose, everything just feels premium, high quality, and it's great. Smooth and effective bottom entry for the battery, nice upgrade. Easy, accessible, customizable, all built in, love it. Authentic DNA75C from Evolve Pro. Changeable panels, really dig them. They're clean, it's a nice touch, I like it. Like the leather, like the stitching. Cons, very similar to the original Therion DNA75C, and also it's a pricey, higher price device. This marketplace is super competitive. Lots of lower price mods, powerful, and really built well. Are they at this level? Nope. Are they this price? Nope. Budget? style, performance. Some people just want to hit a button and vape. They don't care about the look. Some people want a more premium device. They want the little touches. They want the real wood. They want the leather. This is for you if you're that type of vapor and if you have the budget. Great device, premium feel, vapes well. You know its limitations. If you're interested in picking this up, boom, down below. You can click the link and they're in stock right now. That wraps this up. I got a whole lot more where this came from. I'll see you soon right here on the Vapor Chronicles. Have a good one.